Hi, my name is James Schmelzer. Today we are here on a photo shoot where we're gonna make it rain. So I have eight sprinkler heads on a 10 foot board and let's just take a look at how we put this shoot together. All right, so we're on the side of the building today and we're just making sure we got water because it is 100 degrees out today. So, you know, when I buy a hose, I got to make sure it's colorful because if it's in a video today, we got to make sure it looks good. So that's the toughest job for me today, putting the hose on. So this is going to be our hair light today and I'll stretch this over the top and I figured I'd put this up first just to figure out the placement. So first thing I'm doing is locking all this down. That should probably be enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's just add another sandbag up in here. That's not going nowhere now. And usually what I'll do is I'll just strap these cords around. Windy day today, but that seems to be holding in there pretty good. That's 10 feet. Oh, I'm off. It's not gonna fit. I might have to move the stands. So this is just a one inch plumber's pipe that I use quite a bit if I need some more weight because it puts a lot of weight on it. Keeps things from blowing away in the wind. Then I'll just put some clamps on the sides. That'll keep it from going in and out. But the reason we're doing it on the side of the building here is it'll keep it from falling over in the wind. Plus we're gonna use some smoke bombs. You know, keep the smoke bombs from blowing because it is a windy day today, which is good because it is hot out. All right, now I'm gonna get some sandbags for those legs. I'll put that over here. Great, now we can take it up. Now let's see if we can get this one right. So this is nothing more than a sprinkler head. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we could have painted the top. So this has to hit the water. So I'm gonna back that up a little bit more. So you gotta figure, figuring out your angles. That might just work from right there. So let's take this up. It's so hot today. That's a perfect day for this. All right, that's pretty close. Now I'm gonna go get a couple clamps and then I'm gonna take that tarp and put that right here on the ground. Seeing how it's a little bit windy, might be good to just keep this in place. And then once I put the tarp on the floor, it'll hold the bottom in place. Aha, now we pull this out. You use the black backdrop so that when you backlight all the water, or we're gonna use some smoke bombs today too, it's gotta be backlit and you gotta have a dark background. Brightness of the rain needs contrast and so it's not gonna show up against a bright backdrop. So we usually use a dark one. That pattern probably won't even show. Well, I need a tarp because the asphalt is not painted on this part of the side of my building. So this backdrop I've had for a while and I just take it everywhere I go when I do the workshops. And it's got two different sides if I want a lighter side, but this will just blend in with the black. And since the lights will be up here and no lights hitting the seam, you probably won't see that. It'll just go dark. And since I stretched it lengthwise instead of width, I can keep the model away from the background. Now my advice is set this up where you have a sewer. So this is just gonna cut across my parking lot into the sewer. Cause once this turns on, that's gonna be a lot of water. So I'm probably gonna raise that up higher so that no water sprays into it. So right now I'm just thinking, the model can stand in front of it and get wet from behind, but she can't come behind it. Cause this is too close. So I'm gonna make a couple adjustments here on the distance. Might have to bring my vacuum cleaner out here. It's like I could use a couple more clamps down at the bottom over there. All right, let's see if I can lift this light stand more. It's got two sandbags on it. What do you call it, old man strength? That's good. Now, the most important, keep these electrical outlets out of water. Now I'm gonna put the power packs up off the ground so that no water touches them. 
Today we have two 2400 watt Speedatron power packs and these will be plugged into electrical. And the reason why we're using these is because these babies are so big, they're never gonna overheat. Most strobes can't take it on a 100 degree day, especially if you're popping nonstop. So this has been the standard in the industry for 30, 40 years, maybe longer. You can rely on them because they're not gonna overheat. There's a lot of strobes out there, but they can't take it in the heat. Any power pack that's really compact, like I got another power pack, it's 2400 watts, it's only this big. <laughs> That'll overheat out here in two minutes. These are gigantic, so there's a lot of space inside and they're not gonna overheat because everything's built rugged. So this is basically the standard in the industry. I'm gonna set one for the back and then I'm gonna have another one for the front. And then that way we can put out a lot of power because I'm right in the middle of the sun today. I'm not worried about is the sun in front of me, is the sun behind me, I don't care where the sun is. So again, I've elevated these packs off the floor so that you know, when the ground gets all wet, the model's not gonna get electrocuted. You know, I'm worried about myself, let alone the models, you know? I can't get too electric. You know, I've got these rubber shoes on making sure that the volts go right through me. 2,400 watts, a lot of energy keep all the cords off the floor today. So this one's going to a tripper inside the garage. So if something goes wrong, it'll just trip the fuse and hopefully not blow up the studio today. So on the Pocket Wizard, it has a USB port and you can program your Pocket Wizard to what power pack you have if you wanna shoot with a faster shutter speed than your sync speed. So the success of everything I do, I would have to thank Pocket Wizard for a technique called HyperSync. This is an ad for Pocket Wizard because people don't know that it has a port on there and they don't know that they can plug this in and program it and do any shutter speed they want. But don't tell anybody, I wanna be the only one doing this. These kind of power packs don't high speed sync, they hyper -syncs. These are not strobes that you would put on your camera. These are studio strobes. So when we purchase studio strobes, we look for what flash head has the slowest flash duration. That lets you hyper -sync. So hyper -sync is when the flash goes poof, stays out there for a little bit. All right, let's get some power going. See, ideally the best spot for your strobe heads, anytime you do this, is gonna be dead center. Dead center will backlight all the rain, right? But then if the model's moving around, how are you gonna rim light, do all the edge lighting and the hair lights? So we're gonna go for plan B, which is two edge lights and a hair light. Three lights all the way around, angle it enough to still get the light lit from the rain lit from behind and so the further they're out here the better off i am because then i can get the lights in closer and closer and closer to her and the longer the lens i use the closer i can bring the lights in and try to get them right into the camera so let's mount a couple strip lights on those now like up there so these are the westcott one by six strips and these are great for full body. It's probably the closest thing to lighting the subject without having to use V-flats. The reason you use big six by eight V-flats is because you can light a taller subject, but believe it or not, these do a really nice job. And again, your distance would control the width also. So let's pop these on there. So today I'll be using the seven foot octobank. And what's nice about that is whenever you're doing full lengths, and you want even light, then the bigger the light, the softer the light. So I can use this size a little bit further away. And then I'll put it up high in butterfly light position. But if the light's too close, it's gonna be brighter up here than down there. So you figure out your distance to even the light out across the body and then the size for softness. And I just gotta put that back on there. These heads are fan cooled, so. Speedatron, standard in the industry. But you know, they do make different heads. So my favorite head is the 102 head, has the slowest flash duration of all the heads that are out there. Now some companies have different flash tubes that you can switch out to try to do hypersync. But this one does it with the head. So let's take this baby up. So I'm thinking what I should probably do is bring that one power pack over here. So up here is a seven foot octobank coming in at about 15 feet away. Underneath that, we have another light given up light. This is at 400 watts, this is at 800 watts. This is gonna put out a little bit more because it's 400 watts more. So this is just gonna fill in our shadows. And all I did was clamp it at the bottom of the stand so that you don't need another stand.
red, white, and blue smoke bomb. It's got the white coming out of here, then it mixes up the red and blue. So I'm gonna clamp it in here at about waist level. I don't know, we put the smoke bomb over here, and then the wind went that way, and then we move it over here, the wind, this, it keeps shifting. So good thing I'm in the studio next door. So I ran in and got my turbo, and what I'm gonna do now is aim this at the smoke, and hopefully it goes in the right direction now, you know what I mean? So that's it for today. That's our wrap of our water chute there with a sprinkler head. And again, don't worry about flooding everywhere because everybody needs some water on a hot day. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. We'll see you again.